Is pi normal? What does that even mean? A normal number is a real number in which all the digits in its infinite expansion occur with equal frequency. In the case of pi, if it were normal, then if we were to look at its decimal expansion stretching away forever, we'd find an equal number of zeros, ones, twos, threes, and so on, as well as equally many of all the possible two-digit numbers, 10, 11, 12, etc., three-digit numbers, and so on. If this were true of the decimal expansion of pi, we'd say that pi is normal in base 10. If pi were absolutely normal, then not only would each of the decimal digits of pi occur equally often, but so too would the digits if it were written in binary, trinary, or to any other number base. Mathematicians have been able to prove that almost all irrational numbers are absolutely normal, but it turns out to be extremely hard to find a proof for specific cases. The first example of a known normal number in base 10 was Champenone's constant, named after the English economist and mathematician David Champenone, who wrote about the significance of it as an undergraduate at Cambridge. Champenone's constant is made up simply of all the consecutive natural numbers 0 0.12345678910111112131314 and so on and therefore contains every possible sequence of numbers in equal proportions one tenth of the digits are one one hundredth of pairs of consecutive digits are one two and so on. It isn't known if it's normal in any other base and therefore whether it's absolutely normal or not. Other proven normal constants exist, but like that found by Champenone, they've been artificially constructed to be normal. It's certainly widely believed among mathematicians that pi is absolutely normal, but no one's proved that it's normal to any base, including 10 let alone that it's absolutely normal. This question of whether pi is normal or not raises the closely related question of whether the digits of pi are random. Currently, the value of pi is known to about 22 trillion decimal places. These known digits will never change, no matter how many times the calculation is run. The known digits of pi, if you like, are part of the frozen reality of the known mathematical universe, and so they can't be random. But what about the digits lying beyond those that have been computed? Assuming pi is normal in base 10, these still-to-be-discovered digits remain essentially statistically random to us. In other words, if someone asked you for a random string of a thousand digits, it would be a valid response to build a computer to calculate pi to a thousand places more than is presently known and use those places as the random string. Asked for another random string of the same length, you could compute the next previously unknown thousand digits. Incidentally, this raises an interesting philosophical question about the nature of mathematical things. To what extent are the decimal places of pi that we haven't yet figured out real? It would be hard to argue that, say, the trillion trillionth digit of pi doesn't exist, or that it doesn't have a specific fixed value, even though we don't yet know what it is. But in what sense or form does it exist, until at the end of an immensely long calculation still to be carried out, it pops into a computer's memory? One final point. It's worth mentioning a discovery made by researchers David Bailey, Peter Borwine, and Simon Plouffe in 1996. They found a fairly simple formula, the sum of an infinite series of terms for pi, that allows any digit of pi to be calculated without knowing any of the preceding digits. That seems at first sight impossible, and it certainly came as a surprise to other mathematicians. 
What's more, a computation of, say, the billionth digit of pi using this method can be done on an ordinary laptop in less time than it takes to eat a meal at a restaurant. Variations on the bailey borwine plouffe formula can be used to find other irrational numbers whose decimal extensions go on forever without repeating. Thanks for watching. As usual, if you haven't already subscribed, please do so, and I'll see you again very soon to discover more maths.